Hi everyone, it's Mrs. Summer here to talk about lesson 703, saturation and solubility curves. In this lesson, students will be able to distinguish between saturated, unsaturated, and supersaturated solutions, predict saturation values given a solubility curve, and compare and contrast solubility data based on solubility curves. So for solutions, they can be classified as unsaturated, which means that more solute can be dissolved, saturated, which means no more solute can be dissolved, or supersaturated, and the solution has more solute than usually possible due to changes in conditions. And then the solution will usually become unstable and crystals can form. So if you look here in this picture, unsaturated means if you add more solute, you can nothing will be end up on the bottom. You can still end up with, um, you can still dissolve more. Saturated is you've got just enough of the solute in the solution, and if you add a little any more, it, some of it will precipitate out. Super saturated is you got way more because of doing something to change the conditions, but as soon as you change the conditions back, it will um, precipitate out and form crystals. So there's certain factors that affect solubility. Temperature is one of them. In most cases, raising the temperature of a solvent can help more of the solute dissolve. So think about it as boiling your water to dissolve your sugar or dissolving salt in it. Um, and then once the temperature decreases, though, your crystals can form. So if we're boiling water, so this is something you could do at home, boil water and put a bunch of sugar in it. And then um, once the temperature like starts to cool down, so you boil water, you put some sugar in it, and you can stick a stick in it. And as the water cools down, the sugar will then crystallize on those sticks and you can make your rock candy. So the difference between gases and then liquids and solids is that when you increase the temperature of a gas, you decrease its solubility. So, but for gas temp gases, if you decrease temp, you're gonna increase your solubility. So gases. For the previous page where it was liquids and solids, liquids and solids, if you increase the temperature, you increase the solubility. So for example, carbon dioxide and water, which is what makes soda or pop or whatever you, word you use for it, um, is when it's colder, more of the carbon dioxide, the carbonation is dissolved. If you leave soda out, um, and it's warm, it, the carbon dioxide leaves and it becomes a flat soda. So for pressure, pressure in, in, um, affects solubility for gases. Increasing the pressure of the gas will allow, of the solution, the, will allow more gas to dissolve into solution. So for example, again with CO2 and with soda, be, by increasing the pressure, manufacturers can dissolve more CO2 into the soda then can be dissolved at regular pressure. So that's when you open your soda can, the pressure decreases and the bubbles come out of the solution. And so, which is not good if somebody had shaken it up ahead of time. So solubility is the measure of the amount of a solute dissolved in a solvent at a given temperature. Solubility curves show the solubility of a given solute in grams per 100 grams of solvent at different temperatures. So for example, how many grams of KNO3 are needed to make a saturated solution at 50 degrees Celsius? So first we need to find the um, curve that is for KNO3. So the curve that is for KNO3 is this green one right here. And the question asks, how many grams of KNO3 are needed to make a saturated solution at 50 degrees Celsius? So what a saturated solution is, is that, or the graph is showing, is that along this curve, at this given temperature, so when you go, um, you can add a temperature and match it up with the y-axis, and it'll tell you how many grams of solute. And then the curve is saturation curve. So at any point along that curve, at a given temperature, it is saturated. So we need to find at 50 degrees Celsius. So if we look here, we're gonna go up to 50 degrees, and we're going to go to where it intersects with our KNO3 line. And if we go across, it tells us 90. So at 
90 grams of KNO3. Three can be dissolved at 50 degrees Celsius. If you try to um, dissolve more than 90 grams at 50 degrees Celsius, it wouldn't it wouldn't dissolve because the saturation point is 50 to 90 grams at 50 degrees Celsius. If you try to dissolve less than 90 degrees, I'm sorry, ne- n- less than 90 grams, you will um, it would still be an unsaturated solution. So you try how many grams of KCl are needed to make a saturated solution at 60 degrees Celsius. So I'm going to zoom this in for you guys as much as I can. So you need KClO3, I'm sorry, not KCl3, KCl at 60 degrees Celsius. So if we look at our curve, KCl is this blue line. So we need to find 60 degrees Celsius, and I'm going to go up to my blue line, and then it's right here. I'm going to go across, and it looks to be about 45 grams KCl at 60 degrees Celsius. Okay, saturated, unsaturated, or super saturated on a solubility curve. So we kind of touched on this on our last few slides, but the line represents a saturated solution. Above the line, there's a potential for it to be a super saturated solution. That doesn't mean that all the time would that be a super saturated solution. It just depends on how the solution was made and what is occurring. On below the line, it means it's an unsaturated solution. So here's a solubility curve. So any solution can be made to be saturated, unsaturated, or supersaturated by changing the temperature. So in order to make a supersaturated solution that stays in solution, you would start here. Okay, at this temperature, it's saturated. Well, I'm going to heat the same amount of solute and the same amount of solvent up to this higher temperature. Then I'm going to slowly cool it down. So I'm not adding any more solute. I'm just changing the temperature. And then here, since it's above the curve and the solution is, the solute still all 100% in solution, it is considered super saturated. Another example is so at 25 degrees Celsius, this is unsaturated. So you have five grams of, um, Solute, 95 grams of solvent. And here, you've got it. And there's equilibrium. At 100 grams, if you change the temperature, 100 grams, it's now unsaturated because you've increased the temperature. Then you're going to cool it slowly. And as you cool slowly, there is no precipitate. It's still, it is super saturated. So all you did from this one to this one was change the temperature. And then you cool it slowly. And then here, if you add a C, you add one more crystal of your solute, it will precipitate out. And then it will now become a saturated solution. So in this example, at 25 degrees Celsius, will KNO3 solution be saturated, unsaturated, or super saturated? If you have 50 grams of solute per 100 grams of um, solute per 100 grams of solvent. So we first have to find our KNO3, which is our green, and at 25 degrees, so I'm going to go up here, and I'm also going to go with 50 grams. So over here, 50 grams. So in this, if you don't heat it up out like more, if you don't heat that 50 grams all the way up to, let's say, um... 60 or 70 degrees Celsius and then cool it back down, it would be um, a saturated solution with some precipitate. So, but in this question, it's probably just looking for you to ask answer super saturated. But remember, super saturated is only if you heat up the solution um, and then cool it back down slowly. 
So you try a solution of calcium chloride has 20 grams of solute and 90 degrees Celsius. Is it saturated, unsaturated, or super saturated? So if we look over here, we have calcium CaCl2 is our orange line. So 20 grams, if we look at 20 grams at 90 degrees. So if we go up 90 degrees and 20 is not even close. Calcium chloride's all the way up here. So this would be unsaturated.